Hi, I'm Susan Lloyd. I'm Ann Charles. And I'm Linda Quinlan. And welcome to All Things LGBTQ. It's May 30th, Tuesday, and we are taping at Orca Media, which we acknowledge as Indigenous Land. Unceded Indigenous yes. Land. Thank you, Ann. And welcome, Susan. Thanks, everybody. Keith is off having fun without him. I told him I'd sit in. And I'm going to start with some trivia. And Anne gets brownie points, just for the record. She got this right. <laughs> As you recall from last time, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So our question is, this prominent mathematician was instrumental in decrypting messages during World War II. They were later charged with indecency and given the option of going to prison or being subjected to treatments believed to make them asexual. To continue their cryptology work, they opted for the treatments. They would die by suicide a year later. Who are they? Hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to start with some events. Very exciting. we got Pride Month coming yeah. up. Yeah. No. And everything feels like it's front-ended, front-loaded here. It feels like things are starting earlier, which is good. It gives us the whole month. Um, so some Pride events in June. Just uh, as an aside, I will be in Provincetown on June 3rd when this is being shown. <laughs> so you'd have to get in your car and drive immediately. But that's happening. <laughs> Montpelier uh, has uh, some Pride events also happening this Saturday. And uh, let's see, in, uh, on June 5th, Woodbelly Pizza on 79 Berry Street from 3 to 8 is offering free pizza for transgender, gender nonconforming, and non-binary people. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. June 5th, huh? June 5th, yeah. Okay. And on the 7th, the Kellogg Hubbard Library is having a Pride Poetry from 6 to 8, and there may be people we know there, right? Yeah. Yes. Co-organizer, Yes. Perhaps. Good job, good job. In Boston, on June 9th, is the Boston Dyke March yeah. oh. at 630 on the Boston. Common. Oh. We did that once when we lived in San Francisco. We had a scooter. I <laughs> <laughs> saw so the other women had Harleys, and we had our, <laughs> we had our little scooter. Way to go. That was fun. Uh, on Saturday, June 10th, is Boston Pride for the People at 11 a.m. in Copley Square. And then in Barrie, on the 10th in City Hall Park, there is a Baked with Love Pride event from 9 to 2. There will be a bake sale, family activities, community resources. Drag Queen Story Hour at the library, so go quick because other states are trying to ban that. Hmm. There'll be games and a Pride bike ride. In Linden on the 10th, there's a Pride bike ride at the Wildflower Inn from noon to 5. In Stowe on June 16th, the Jewish community of Greater Stowe has a Pride Shabbat at 6. East Montpelier on Friday, June 16th, uh, Fox Market has a Pride Poetry oh. event from 7 to 9. In Rutland on June 17th, Pride Out Loud on Center Street from 9 to 5. There'll be vendors, live music, speakers, food, and drag performers, including guest Jocelyn Fox from RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, That's exciting. That's right. And, and there's the movies. Do you have the movies? Uh, the, the movies Pride are movies? coming out. Yes, and I thought Keith said that that was, uh, was that too late to get out? The Savoy is doing a, a queer film festival. Yeah, it's on the 5th. Is that on the 5th? Okay. Isn't it? It's the day after, it's the Sunday after we air. Okay. And it'll be an illustrious panel. Yes, I heard about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was kind of fun is uh, <clears throat> on June 17th in Burlington, there's a scrappy little disco. <laughs> oh. It's uh, Boogie with Becca. It's a fundraiser <laughs> for Becca Balinch at AO Glass, which is on Pine Street in Burlington. I recognize the phrase. There's a pride prom. I'm fascinated by this from 7 to 9 at the Paramount Theater in, uh, in Rutland. In Portland, Maine on the 17th, together with pride, there's a parade and a festival and a Tra a traditionally, a dike march is held the night prior, but there's no updated information yet. In Bethel, on Thursday, June 22nd to Saturday, June 24th, car Carnival. Oh, <laughs> that sounds that's fun. a new twist. Gay trivia at Babes on the 22nd. On the 23rd, Mass Queerade Ball. <laughs> <laughs> at the White Church, I'll be alcohol-free in all ages. On the 24th, there's a family meeting, a pride picnic, parasol promenade. I can just see in that. I think we need to buy him a parasol, don't you think? A he drag may have show? One. He probably does. A drag show with um, uh, emoji nightmare and then a dance party. 
North Conway on the 24th, White Mountain Pride at the North Conway Community Center. There's uh, the event MC is Reverend Yolanda, the former Ooh. Vermonter who was a co-host of the live cable show, Cherry Tart. I always loved Cherry Tart. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Yolanda the Live. The show aired from 1998 to 2001 on VCAM. They've created an online archive of their show. In Bennington on the 25th, there's a parade and block party. And on the, also on the 25th in Newport, the Northeast Kingdom Pride Fest in downtown Newport from 12 This is like to endless 7. stuff to do. <laughs> there's also a celebration, unity, friendship, respect, food, dancing, music, love, and of course, a parade. So that's a lot to do, people. I'm excited just thinking about that. You'll be busy every night. Well, the other really of, doing it up. The other event before I hand it over is there's a memorial for Michael Hayes on Sunday, June yeah. 25th from 2 to 5 at the Ellie Long Music Center at St. Michael's College. And for those of you that don't know, the stage name of Marguerite LeMay. <laughs> mm -hmm. There was actually a really sweet story about um, Marguerite. Uh, they had a stroke in 2019 and were living mm -hmm. in assisted living, and they went out for this beautiful stroll around the neighborhood, saw all these people they hadn't seen in years, walked down to Church Street, did a whole thing, and then sort of collapsed on their way home, mm. and then were gone, and all these people got to say goodbye. Wow. wow. Weird kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. On that note, I got everybody warmed up and depressed for you, Anne. So okay, <laughs> I know, I've got take some us away, news ahead. Take us to faraway places, as Keith says, and bum us out. Yes. All these, you know, fun events, and now, and now, this, <laughs> now the world right. travel. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but maybe I would go as long as I can until Linda stops me, <laughs> and then finish up uh, in my second segment. I have two clips. But I'll start with the bad news from Africa that many of you, I'm sure, have heard. Uganda's anti-homosexuality law has been signed by Museveni. I have now before you a picture of some activists who um, protested this law uh, during the course of its um, progress into um, infamy. It's been signed into law. It's been called deadly legislation and an assault on human rights. Um, Museveni gave the assent, which immediately becomes one of the strictest anti-LGBTQ plus laws in the world. The new legislation doubles down on already harsh sanctions imposed on LGBTQ people in Uganda, where consensual same-sex uh, sexual intimacy is illegal. The Anti-Homosexuality Act introduces the new crime of aggravated homosexuality, which is defined as sex with a person under the age of 18 and having sex while HIV positive. Among other categories, it carries the death sentence. Parliament approved an earlier version of the bill, which I reported on in March, um, that had provisions that sought to punish people for merely identifying as part of the LGBTQ community, but this clause was removed uh, later by lawmakers. Big deal. Was that a concession? Yeah. <laughs> Arthur Kaima, a queer Ugandan human rights activist, condemned the vile and deadly legislation. Rather than focusing on the real issues Uganda is facing, poverty, poor infrastructure, the economy, domestic violence, Museveni would rather cause distraction by attacking our fundamental right to exist, uh, Kayimi said. An AIDS activist from the UK, and this is sort of interesting, I think, said we must do everything to persuade Uganda against this regressive step that could trigger a domino effect among other countries in the region to Backslide on LGBTQ plus rights, including Kenya, Ghana, 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 and Burundi. Governments worldwide must immediately act to assert the rights of gay people and ensure the safety of LGBTQ plus Ugandans by ensuring frontline services are supported and safe asylum is given where needed. He added that the UK has a particular responsibility in this fight. Uh, as laws criminalizing LGBTQ plus people were first introduced when the British Empire colonized Uganda. And this is a theme that's still playing yes. out many years later. Even in Bermuda. 
In, um, additionally, he said that the U.S. has a stake in this movement, as evangelical fundamentalist groups have funded this hateful agenda, which is true. After uh, the Anti-Homosexuality Act passed through Uganda's parliament in March, White House Press um, Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre condemned it. Um, warning that the U.S. could implement economic sanctions if the African nation signed it. Now they have. Uh, she described the measure as one of the most extreme anti-LGBTQ laws in the world. I wonder if they give, if we give them funding. Well, yeah. She said the anti-LGBTQ plus legislation would impinge upon universal human rights, jeopardize progress in the fight against HIV AIDS, detour tourism and investment in Uganda, and damage Uganda's international reputation. So Blinken, Anthony Blinken, says, you know, condemned it and said they're investigating all the economic ties to Uganda. So I certainly hope the international reaction is swift and punitive. And may I add something? I just read recently that Ted Cruz and Mark Rubio both thought, said that even they said that this law is draconian. That's scary. Well, yeah. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Really so. Well, I have better news from Africa uh, involving Namibia. And this is not a custody case that I've been talking about <laughs> at length. Rather, the top court in Namibia recognizes the same-sex same marriages that are formed elsewhere. So. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled on Tuesday that the government must recognize the unions of same-sex couples who, remain, uh, who married in countries where it was legal for them to do so, even though same-sex marriage remains illegal in Namibia itself. The case stemmed from the residency applications of a German woman who married a Namibian woman in Germany and of a South African man who married a Namibian man in South Africa, the only country on the continent that allows same-sex marriage. The government refused to give the non-Namibian spouses residency rights in the country on the grounds that their marriages could not be recognized in Namibia, which prompted them to take legal action. Uh, gay rights activist. A gay rights activist welcomed the ruling as a step in the right direction. Today's verdict and outcome clearly indicates that Namibia is moving towards recognizing the diversity in this country, irrespective of people's political or social positioning, she said. And of course, um, there was opposition from a political party and sexual contact between men is a criminal offense, though the law is seldom enforced. Um, like Namibia, many other African nations still ban same-sex relationships with couples risking jail and public scorn. So it's mixed news. Yeah. Um, I have a happy story now involving a picture, if I may. Okay, this should be Please. the last one for Please now. Please do. Well, let's go to Australia, <laughs> where the Victorian Parliament hosts a drag story time yes. for canceled performers. And I have a picture before you now of Sammy T, um, Sam T, reading a story before uh, young and old spectators. It's unlikely that the State Federation Room at Victoria's Parliament House has hosted as much color as it did on Wednesday, <laughs> when a coterie of politicians, including Premier Daniel Andrews, shuffled in to hear drag performers read them stories. After weeks of headlines about such events at local libraries being canceled owing to abuse and threats from those who oppose the events, including but not limited to far-right and fringe conspiracy groups, the government quiet, quietly invited five performers caught up in the cancellations to speak at the safest place in Victoria, the parliament itself. Nobody shows up quite the way that a drag queen does, said the minister. <laughs> Quality Harriet Shane to the group of more than 100, which included members of Melbourne's queer community and their children. When the morning teas weren't going ahead and the storylines weren't going ahead, story times weren't going ahead, I thought, well, let's get five drag performers and see if we can make Parliament more extravagantly sequined than it's ever been. Nice. 
The event marked the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia, and she said it was in defiance of the small, hateful minority that had targeted drag events at local councils in recent weeks and those who have campaigned against trans rights. We will never, ever let a small, hate-filled rebel take away from our joy, our pride, our dignity, and our well-being, she said. It is therefore important that we all stand together and make sure that when we say equality that when we say equality is not negotiable, we mean it. And when we say that our parliament and our communities are inclusive, we quite literally mean it. All so right. that's you know, livened up that day in Parliament. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to move on in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, more depressing, <laughs> American news. Oh, yeah. Mm. A family of a young black transgender man who was killed by a security guard in San Francisco Walgreens has filed a civil lawsuit. Attorneys for his parents said on Friday, according to ABC News, the suit is against Walgreens, the security guard, and the company that provides security to the store and employed the guard. Brown, 24, was shot to death just outside of Walgreens, April 27th. He was unarmed. Police arrested the guard on suspicion of homicide, ho homicide but released him soon after with San Francisco District Attorney Brooke Jenkins saying the evidence clearly shows that, he sus that the suspect he was in mortal danger and acted in self-defense. You know, Walgreens was one of the first places to stop selling the mephipristone, right? Mm -hmm. That um, abortion drug. Walgreens, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Republican Governor Kristi Noem of South Dakota has called the state's boards of regents, the group that supervise the state's higher education institutes, to ban drag shows from campuses and remove selected pronouns from colleges and university materials. In a letter she sent to the board and posted online on Thursday said that um, the state has allowed liberal ideologies to poison their universities and colleges. She added that these institutions were once a hotbed of ideological diversity debate and the pursuit of truth and discovery have now turned into becoming a one-sided, closed-minded and focused on feelings rather than facts. Noam wrote that colleges and universities have taught the importance of diversity and provided safe spaces, but do not teach students how to tolerate dis dissent and disagreement. In a list of actions, she urges the board to remove all references to preferred pronouns in all school materials and enforcement of such. Another challenge is to prohibit drag shows from taking place on university campuses. Ew. I know. LGBTQ plus activists are denouncing Target's decision to remove some of its pride merchandise in light of threats the company received and calling on all businesses to stand up to homophobia and transphobia. Because uh, Target, I guess, last week decided that uh, their um, customers um, were, I mean, their Employees. workers have been um, threatened and so they, uh, <clears throat> Critics falsely claimed a tuck-friendly swimsuit designed to conceal male genitals was being marketed to children when, in fact, it was for adults. So, <sighs> Jessica Watkins, a transgender army veteran who joined the far-right extremist group, the Oath Keepers, was sentenced to more than eight years in prison on Friday for her role in the January 6th insurrection. That's so interesting. Yes. I know, isn't it? I was kind of surprised to read that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And this is an interesting story because it seems that s dozens, if not hundreds, of transgender individuals are seeking donations on GoFundMe to finance their moves from states, limiting their freedoms, with many seeking to escape from Florida. <laughs> yeah. For example. <laughs> Uh, in the wake of more than 500 anti-LGBT plus bills being introduced in state legislations across the United States, 
Families and trans individuals are looking to leave their respective states. Um, so I guess there's a big campaign for a GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. A popular restaurant in Orlando that hosts drag brunches filled, filed a lawsuit Monday against Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, claiming it lost business because the new law signed last week that has been widely interpreted by LGBT advocates at a band to ban any lessons on sexual orientation or gender identity before the seventh grade. Reco oh no, wait a minute, I'm sorry I went on to the wrong thing. Oh, God. Well, what I was thinking about, are, do you, are you gonna cover the Pan America lawsuit? No. Pan America is suing, I think, a library or a school in Florida for um, yeah. violating First Amendment rights. Mm. And, you know, Hamburger Mary started in San Francisco, oh, and I remember I going yeah. there when I was oh, yeah. not young. Yes. <laughs> Did I you went, go there? Yeah. It I was like in, in the, Francisco where for many was years. it? It was downtown there. somewhere. There was yeah. one down um, the south of Van Ness. Yeah. Down a couple yeah. blocks off of that. Yeah. And so uh, they're suing from Orlando because their First Amendment rights were violated when DeSantis last week signed a bill restricting the attendance of children at certain performances. According to the lawsuit, the restaurant is asking the court to block the, implication, the implementation of this law. So we'll see how that goes. And here's a good news story, I suppose. North Face, a company specializing in clothing and supplies for camping, hiking, and other outdoor activities, is standing by its pride participation despite right-wing criticism after it featured a drag queen in an online ad. The ad for North Face's Summer of Pride campaign features Patty Gonia, and <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and um, they said on their Instagram on Wednesday, "I'm a real life homosexual." The Queen says in a video, "I'm here with the North Face to help you come out in nature." with us. <laughs> mm. They go on the show some of the company's Pride Collection merchandise and note that North, North, North Face will host outdoorsy Pride events in Atlanta and Salt Lake City. Mm. So, well, there we go. Yeah. So, and Iowa has joined the ranks of several other red states by enhancing a Don't Say Gay measure as part of an aggressive education law that removes certain books from public schools. Republican Governor Kim Reynolds signed the legislation Friday. The new law bans lessons on any sexual orientation or gender identity before seventh grade, requires teachers to alert parents if students wish to use new pronouns, uh, and prohibits any books in school that depicts sex or sex acts. So that's, you know, let me see what else. I, so I'll just do one more, I guess, and move to our buddy down at the end of the table. <laughs> Gay filmmaker and author Kenneth Anger, known for his experimental and home erotic movies and his wildly gossipy Halloween Babylon books, has died at age 96. Anger died May 11th, but his death was just widely reported this week. He died at an assisted living facility in Yucca Valley, California. Uh, the art gallery that represented Anger told the nation's media outlets that he had died. Oh, and just quickly, I'll just do this. I haven't seen this yet, but I can't wait to see the new Wanda Sykes uh, mm. yeah. comedy hour yeah. on... Um, Netflix. 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 I think I saw an ad for it. Yeah. yeah. Wanda Sykes has spoken out against Dame Ch Dave Chappelle's transphobic Good. jokes, Good. anti LBG plus legislation, and shared why she accepts the woke comedian label. So. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> All right, that's a lot. Uh, so, some, some news the governor 
vetoed the $8.5 billion budget that included the Universal School Meals Program. Mm. Of note, 12 Democrats, including Montpelier Reps Casey and McGahn, and five progressive voted against the budget because it didn't include an extension of the motel voucher program. That's oh, been yeah. really hotly debated. This coalition called themselves the General Assistance Just Housing Coalition. They've stated they will not vote to override a veto with the expectation of reopening the budget to restore the voucher program. We'll be following additional bills that are vetoed huh. on our next show. Becca Watch, <laughs> during her first term, Becca has already become a leading voice for truth and transparency, and now she's calling on Congress to censure Republican Paul Gosser, who currently employs known supporters of a neo-Nazi. Oh, yeah, I am. She said, I'm leading the charge to censor him, and it's not just personal, although she had a grandparent that died in the Holocaust. Uh, she said she's fighting to hold Congress to a higher standard and send a message that hate and violent extremism have no home in Washington. On a related note, Russia is barring, did you hear about this? Russia has a list, they're barring certain US leaders and like sports figures and <laughs> rock stars and, uh, and weird Stephen stuff. Colbert, I think. Stephen Colbert, exactly. Uh, yeah. Among those listed is Becca Ballard, <laughs> banned from Russia. Oh, I bet she's happy. Not that anybody wants to go. A good for her, that's great. That. Uh, there was a pride flag that was vandalized in South Burlington. Their police are investigating an incident that did damage to the flag. Mm. Uh, a mom's love for her trans son inspires the first Pride event in Guilford, Vermont. Oh. The event was organized by Sarah Salato. She founded a nonprofit called Alex to raise fun funds to organize LGBTQ plus events in Guilford. She said that when her, when her son came out as transgender, she was scared. I grew up in a straight world, Irish Catholic, conservative, traditional family. We didn't know anybody in the community. I didn't know anything about them. Her husband said, if you told me a year ago I'd be going to a Pride event, I would have said, what is a Pride event? <laughs> <laughs> well, now they know all about it. They're educating themselves. That's good news. Uh, what else? Uh, a bill to out LGBTQ plus students postponed indefinitely by the New Hampshire House. Good. The New Hampshire House voted 195 to 190, that was tight, Ooh, yeah. to defeat a so-called parental bill of rights. The bill would have forced teachers to out questioning an LGBTQ students to their parents. That is so uncool. I know it. The Republican-backed legislation would have required schools to disclose information about a child's gender identity to their parents upon request unless school personnel could show clear and convincing evidence that the child would likely be abused or neglected. Wow. Opponents argued the measure would infringe on the privacy rights of an already vulnerable group of young people, so they celebrated when the House voted 195 to 190 to indefinitely postpone it. Wow. <laughs> if a parent wants to know what's going on with their child from a gender or sexuality perspective, they need to ask their child. <laughs> oh, go figure. What a concept. What a concept to have a conversation <laughs> with your child. The Healy administration supports federal protections for trans student athletes. Massachusetts Governor Maura Healy, remember she's, she's one of us people. That's yeah. right. It's come out in more ways than one in support <laughs> of proposed protections for transgender student athletes from elementary school through college. Mass Education Secretary Patrick Tutwiler submitted public comment in support of the administration's proposed changes to modifications to Title IX to prohibit schools and colleges from enacting blanket bans against transgender students participating on teams that align with their gender identity. That's a big, that's become a big, yeah. mm -hmm. big thing. Um, Maine lawmakers advance a bill to allow gender affirming care for teens 16 and older without parental consent. See, that makes more sense to me. Yeah. I put that in the bucket of like birth control and abortion mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. Guns. You gotta, Maine's, uh, guns, <laughs> Maine's <laughs> Joint Standing Committee voted to advance legislation that would allow minors who are at least 16 to access gender affirming hormone therapy without the consent of their parents. The bill now moves forward to full votes in the state's House and Senate. Rhode Island Senate passes a bill to facilitate adoption for LGBTQ plus families. The Rhode Island Senate voted unanimously to pass S0121, a bill that would streamline the process for conformatory adoption and make it more accessible for LGBTQ plus parents 
to ensure security for their families through adoption. A companion bill in the House, 5226, is under consideration. As LGBTQ plus families are under attack around the country today, the Rhode Island Senate affirmed once again that love makes a family, said lead sponsor Senator Don Ewer. I'm grateful to my Senate colleagues for unanimously supporting the conformatory adoption legislation on the floor today. That's pretty cool. Do you know, they, they had this big clip about, uh, I was when I was reading about the best education places and the worst in the country. Mm -hmm. Mississippi was the worst. Often is, yep. Massachusetts was the first. Interesting. And Vermont was the fourth. That's not bad. Wow. All right. I got a couple more, and then I'm going to give you the trivia. Cartoonist Allison Bechtel announces new dykes yes. to watch out for. Yes. Oh, this is very exciting. Uh, we're going to try to do Fun Home oh, at our great. theater next oh, season. That would very be fun. Cool. That's a lot that. of singing. It is a lot of singing, yeah. but good singing. Mm -hmm. Great lyrics. Great lyrics. The You're former right. Seven Days cartoonist and Vermont Book Award winner will be producing Dykes to Watch Out for podcast and audible version of her comic strip that ran from 1983 to 2008, dropping on June 1st. So it's coming right wow, up, people. Yeah. Tomorrow, feature recognizable voices as those of Carrie Brownstein from Portlandia. Roberta Calendres from A League of Their Own, <laughs> Roxane Gay, New York Times oh. best-selling author of Bad Feminist Essays, Jen Colella, Come From Away, wow, nice. oh. cast of thousands, <gasps> and Jane Lynch, I love her, <laughs> Me too. from Glee, oh my gosh. Didn't Whom you Bechtel, love her in Glee? Oh, she was uh. amazing, whom Bechtel collectively described in a Facebook post as my favorite all-female voiceover cast of all time. That's awesome. It will be uh, scripted by Pulitzer Prize finalist Madeline George and directed by Tony Award nominee Lee Silverman and includes original music by Faith Soloway and Bitch. Oh. It will feature characters familiar to fans of Bechdel Strip, including Mo, Lois, Tony, and Clarice as they surf the wave of dyke drama. <laughs> Such a great gift to hear the characters in their world come to life on audio, talking and kvetching and playing softball and going to marches, <laughs> Bechdel told the advocate. Often when I was drawing the comic strip, I would wish it could have been the have the extra dimension of a soundtrack, and now it does. You can visit Audible to order. Uh, a woman who fled the U.S. to keep child custody more than a decade ago says her lawyer encouraged the flight. In a May 19th filing in federal court in Vermont, as part of a long-running civil case, Lisa Miller outlined what led her to leave the country in September 2009 with her then seven-year-old daughter when it became evident she would lose custody of the girl to her former partner, Janet Jenkins of Fairhaven, Vermont. Have you been tracking this? Yes. Yeah. This well, has Keith been, has. Keith has. This has been a two-decade-long legal saga that began in 2000. They joined in a civil union. I sort of remember that. Uh-huh. The couple split up in 2003 with Miller claiming she was not lesbian and joined, oh, the Baptist Church in Virginia. Uh -huh. <laughs> Is this going to end badly? They didn't appear at the, at the court-ordered time. Well, in the interest of time, uh, I'm going to move on to the trivia, because I want Anne to have her time in the spotlight. Uh, so the answer to our question, prominent mathematician decrypting messages, uh, they took on those treatments so they could continue their work. Alan Turing, uh, who was the subject of the movies The Imitation Game, great movie. Yeah, that Benedict was a Cumberbatch, really good movie, yeah. Amazing, and Breaking the Code. Turing was given treatment with DES, which was chemical castration. It's a synthetic female hormone traditionally used to treat urinary incontinence oh. in spayed female dogs. In 2013, he was given a royal pardon. Ugh, after he died. Yeah. Yes. After little, he killed himself, yeah. Yeah, other than that. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> How was the play? How <laughs> was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? Back to you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do my headline and lead up to a couple of clips. Um, let's move to uh, North America. We covered Africa and Australia. And now I have a picture before you of OCL Biana, who's holding their non-binary passport in Mexico. Mexico has issued its first non-binary passport. <laughs> so there, there we have it. Uh, let's go to Europe, where we have a lot of mixed uh, reports. Uh, homophobic attacks in France rose almost 30% last year, according to an LGBTQ group. Oh. 
British cycling, new British cycling rules bar transgender women from competing in female events. Mm. Uh, the, well, here's good news. The Estonian parliament has passed the first reading of the marriage equality bill. Same-sex marriage may soon become legal. Mm. So that's good. Go Estonia. Um, and the European Rights Court tells Romania to recognize same-sex couples. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, tells good them. luck with that. <laughs> tells them? What is that? <laughs> Does that mean they have to? Well, uh, if neither, <laughs> there's negotiation. But eventually they're going to have to, mm. is the prediction. Mm. Um, almost 20 million people are in this Balkan nation, wow. uh, and it remains socially conservative ranking 41st out of 49 in the 2023 ranking of European countries' LGBTQ rights advocacy. So uh, the EU has given them a nudge, and I hope it takes. And now I'd like to go to my, my first clip, which is a film I really want to see, and it looks like it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's from the UK. Mm -hmm. It's called Billy Blue Jean. Uh, and I'll give you a little plot. Okay. Jean is a woman caught in an uncomfortable limbo between two worlds. She's a newly minted lesbian mm -hmm. on the fringes of oh. a community of louder, prouder dykes and in the first flush of romance with Viv. Mm. Viv. <laughs> She's also a PE teacher in the North. Oh. Who isn't? <laughs> <laughs> in a Northeast England secondary school in the late 1980s. No, I loved Ryan. <laughs> Who didn't? Remember that Meg Christian tune? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I won't <clears throat> sing you uh, a lyric from that. Exactly the kind of person who the Thatcher regime's recently enacted Section 28 law forbidding the promotion of homosexuality by local authorities has in its crosshairs. Now, this Section 28 law I looked up. And it yeah. was uh, effective between 1988 and 2003. Wow. And, you know, it brought back all, you know, all that time in the U.S. where teachers weren't, who were afraid to march in parades and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. For Gene and McEwen's McEwen playing performance is an intricate miracle of minute details and nervy flickers of alarm, the separation of work and life is an essential but increasingly precarious balance. That balance to the frustration of Viv, who senses Jean's reticence when it comes to fully embracing her sexual identity, is upended when one of her students, Lois, encroaches on Jean's closely guarded world. So let's look at a clip from Blue Jean. Ooh. I need you in two teams. Jimmy, can you get over here? Mike, over there. So, what do you do, Jean? I'm a teacher. Fantastic. What do you teach? P. Lois, come on in. You got a man on the scene at the moment, then? No, I haven't. You do realise that the fill of hotels with this here to distract us from what's really going on. Not everything is political. Of course it is. Here at home, there's been another big demonstration against Clause 28, which seeks to stop councils from promoting homosexuality. I've been saying this is a good idea for years. Young people have such vulnerable minds. <laughs> Can anyone tell me what fight or flight means? Fight or flight. What's wrong? You look stressed. I don't want my students on every part of my life. Every part of your life? What? If anyone found out, I'd never work again. The gay and lesbian lifestyle is not natural or normal, and it never will be. What I don't get is how two girls actually... <laughs> Just ignore them. So are you dead? I'm not talking about me. What kind of example are you setting for her? Just because I don't parade my sexuality around like a badge of honour. How was that girl ever going to learn that she has a place in this world? Maurice, she thinks she has a place in this world. You're the one with the problem, not me. This isn't a game, Lois. It's me life. She reminded me a bit of you, you know. A deer in the headlights. I'm not a deer in the headlights, am I? Sometimes. I'm damaged. And in a way, you're not. At least you don't have to be. If I don't have to be, then why do you? What 
that. YouTube. Yeah, got to watch it. Too. Let me get the popcorn. Let me uh, go through some Asia headlines, if I may. All right, we only have four minutes now. Okay, so now Asia, uh, Malaysia has raided swatch stores seizing colorful watches linked to gay pride. I oh. saw one in New York. Just They had a swatch rainbow. And the Swiss watch, watch. Swish, Swiss watchmaker is standing by its guns. Nice. So, yeah. Um, you have another clip? You might want to get to that. All right. Well, um, LGBTQ activists have condemned Japan's meaningless equality bill in which they say um, they ah. outlaw unjustified discrimination. So what's justified discrimination <laughs> well, against minorities? Depends on who you ask. <laughs> Taiwan grants adoption to same-sex couples in the latest move toward full equality. Beijing's LGBTQ center shuttered as a crackdown continues in China. And finally, I want to talk at length, if I may, about this. No, uh, you may not. <laughs> <laughs> you have three minutes. <laughs> right. Let's talk about um, Starbucks India, which has this, is as an ad starring a trans model, and it's gone viral to mixed reviews, and it goes quickly. It's only a minute, but so let me tell you. Okay. I don't want to spoil it, but I have to tell you. Um, <laughs> the new Starbucks India campaign featuring a trans model has caused a stir. The two-minute ad titled, it's titled, It Starts With Your Name, depicts a Hindi-speaking family meeting at a Starbucks to reconcile a father's strained relationship with his trans daughter. After brief tension that you won't experience now because you know the plot, <laughs> uh, the man shows his acceptance of his daughter by ordering coffees for everyone under her new name, Arpita. For me, you are still my kid, the dad says in the ad, translated into English in subtitles. Only a letter has been added to your name. Now, there's been a lot of hoo-ha about this ad. It's been viewed online millions of times since its release last week, and reactions have run the gamut from praise to staunch opposition. Many South Asians said the depiction hits close to home and is an important step forward for young Indians in the LGBTQ community. I cannot imagine being estranged from my children for any reason, let alone for them being who they are. But I know not everyone is there yet, one person tweeted. This advert for Starbucks from India, still an incredibly conservative country, sends a powerful statement. But some in the U.S., of course, and in India have lambasted Starbucks for going woke, even calling for a boycott of the company. A spokesperson for Starbucks said that despite the backlash, the company will continue to support the trans community. At Starbucks, we unequivocally support the LGBTQIA2 plus community. Our campaign in India, it starts with your name, shows how Starbucks is committed to making people of all backgrounds and identities feel welcome. Except no unions. We will continue to use, except in <laughs> Buffalo and yeah. isolated places. We, all right. We, we will continue to use our voice to advocate for greater understanding of the importance of inclusion and diversity across the communities we serve around the world. All right. So there is a dissenting voice here at the, on the set. Uh, enjoy the ad. Let's look at it now. So no, is bar gusamat hona, please. पापा फॉर मीटिंग मी आई नो बड़े साल बीत गए लेकिन आप आज भी मेरे लिए सब कुछ हो तेरी 
आदतें नहीं बदले बेटा मेरे लिए तो आज भी मेरा बच्चा है बस एक लेटर ही तो ऐड हुआ है तेरे नाम में It seems that I have a clip called Summoning Sylvia, mm -hmm. which is a movie mm -hmm. uh, that is on somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about um, this group of gay people who end up in this house, and they're trying to bring back Sylvia through. Like a seance? Yeah, you know. Her. It's a horror movie? Yeah. Or? Well, I don't know if it's horror, but it's a little creepy. Anyway, so here's the clip. <laughs> Summoning Sylvia. Um, and um, uh, let me see. Are you going to uh, tell us more about the plot, or are you just going to tease us? I um, no. Ann does the plot stuff. I'm like, here's the clip. That's the plot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know? I'm All just, right. I'll, I'll do the plot. <laughs> We don't have a lot of time, but go ahead. Okay. Larry and his three best friends help <laughs> he head upstate for a weekend getaway at a haunted house. As they sashay through the dusty corridors, they recount the home's legend from 100 years ago. A murderous woman named Sylvia mm. slaughtered her son and burdened him beneath the floorboards. Oh. Do we really want to see this Yes! Movie? All the, right, that's the, enough. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've got more. I, I the, know, but we're, we're, i got to finish my stories. I yeah. wondered what the gay angle was. was it? It's They're gay guys. The gay guys are sashay. Sassy and yeah. hilarious seance Sashing. comedy okay. <laughs> told right. from a gay uh, male perspective. Okay, there you go. Carry on. And All right. I am BGB. <laughs> <laughs> which I went from sometimes. Mm, great, so now that I've warmed up. Wait, where are you? Oh, let the bachelor weekend come back! The boys brought me upstate to this epic haunted house. Like, people actually died here. Her upstate? Uh, is spooky. Tell him the legend. Widow and mad woman discovered dead after murdering son. I need a name. Sylvia? Sylvia! Sylvia! Babe, what about my brother? What if Harrison came here? Guys, this is Jamie's brother. He's gonna be joining us for the weekend. You're all gay. <coughs> Let me think. <laughs> he has a knife. <gasps> Sylvia. There are four magnificent queens in this house, and she's not done yet. None of this was on the schedule. All right, so I have uh, journalist Marsha Gessen, oh, who also yes. fled the anti-LGBTQ Putin regime and has been warning Americans about the danger of Trump's authoritarianism, said, this is what pride looks like. Pride is political. Over the last few decades, people have, may have forgotten that. Pride is about going into a place that can be frightening. It was wonderful to see so many people waving at us. Um, so she was at the Brooklyn... Um, Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach. Uh, here's a photo of her there. 
she spoke to uh, the Russian uh, population that Emigration. goes to these mm -hmm. uh, in Russian. Mm. So uh, that that was pretty pretty interesting. Uh, what? May I speak? Go ahead, Ben. It was really cool. They were standing on a park on a park bench, kind of instead of mm. a podium. And then another speaker was our mentor and friend Ann Northrup. I love oh, Ann. I know it. I so know. you know, it was a really small and um, courageous gathering, and it's been building. It's been steam. five or six years yeah. now. Yeah. And the protesters marching from Alabama state capitol to the state house Tuesday had a clear message. Alabama, hear us out. We are queer and trans and proud, hundreds of protesters said in unison as they walked. The march titled Drag Me to the Capitol, <laughs> I know, protested several bills filed by GOP state legislatures attacking the LGBT community, including bills banning drag shows and legislation to ban transgender athletes from college sports, and here's a picture of um, them marching in Alabama. And you know, when people march in Alabama, it's always a good thing, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Depends on what they're marching for. Yeah, well, really. Good point. They, <laughs> good point. Are there things, well, that's true. Are there things on LGBT fire? LGBT they're marching <laughs> to my house. <laughs> good point. Is there rope yes, in their of hands? course. <laughs> Well, are there, are there hoods? <laughs> when LGBTQ people are go. marching. There you go. That's for okay. their rights. That's a good clarification. And <laughs> this is really an interesting thing because on Sunday, out actor LGBTQ advocate Sarah Paulson bought out Dallas Theater, the theater's showing of Monica, a transgender themed drama starring Trace Lissette. Paulson booked out. The Violet, Violent, uh, Violet Crown Cinema's Monica screening for the full day, meaning attendance was free so as long as seats were available and guests had, regist had registered beforehand. The Florida-born star is known for her roles in American Horror Story, Studio 60, On the Sunset Strip, and Ratched. Hmm. She won both a Golden Globe Award as a Primetime Emmy for her performance in 2006, The People vs. O.J. Simpson. American Crime Story, Paulson, who has been in a relationship with Holland Taylor since 2015, has been an outspoken LGBT rights advocate and has appeared in a variety of queer roles in her career. And organizers in Tampa have canceled their pride, which is really kind of, you know, like, pfft, you know, because they're, they're afraid uh, because DeSantos signed into law and, you know, the, no. Don't say gay. You know, yeah, trans don't people. have any fun. I know. Yeah. 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 Don't <laughs> so, read. Don't read. Uh, on live entertainment. So they can't do something besides live entertainment with, you know, anyway. Many drag performances are child appropriate. They're afraid that, you know, they'll all be arrested. The political climate is changing so fast with DeSantis thinking he wants to be king and ruler of the U.S. Tampa Pride President Kerry West told the advocate, people like this guy are a scary joke. Well, you know, you really need to just get out there and do it, right? Well, well, I mean, manners cave, too. I know. It won't I mean, have drag performance. It won't have any costumes. <sighs> okay. Ve Vacaville Mayor John Carley, this is in California, California, will not be issuing a proclamation to recognize Pride Month, and he will not raise the rainbow flag, according to Solano County Pride Center. Solano Pride Center met with the mayor on May 24th to discuss celebrating and acknowledging Pride Month. But nope, not going to have anything to do with it. And it's the first time that the mayor of this town has not participated in gay pride. May I speak? Yes, go ahead. I have to quote Audre Lorde, your silence will not protect you. I know. 
<sighs> so let's see, I think, oh, and Brittany Griner returned to the basketball court, we know this, right? Uh, so. And she was a clue on oh. this week's New York Times crossword puzzle. Oh. And um, Kamala Harris was there mm -hmm. with second gentleman Doug Emhoff. Mm -hmm. So they turned up. So I guess that's about it, you all. How are you doing? Okay. Linda's rushed us through our story. Do you want to squeeze in another story? Yet? I know. We have two minutes I, in. You got one? I, I skipped a page, but I'm good. good. I, I will yield my time to the talkative person to my left. Well, I just <laughs> love to run my mouth, as people say. But I have all these stories, but just, now. Just pick one. Do you have a headline? Do you have a well, I have Reader's Digest that you could just tease and talk about next time? Well, um, here's this terrible story about the Beijing center. It's just the last one more thing, example of the widespread crackdown. Um, and I could talk to you about the... You know, I was thinking when you were talking about, you know, the, um, um, the death sentences in Africa, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we can say whatever we want, but China is going to work. I mean, China is making giant inroads in Africa. And, the, and they don't care, you know, whether they put all the gay people to death. They have terrible human rights record, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I heard a, um, an interview with a wonderful intellectual who's going to come on the show who says, you know, the idea of com the association of communism with China and Russia is just a big misnomer and a lie. Because communism isn't that, in her view. Well, it's not communism in either country, really, when you're yeah. talking about real Marxism. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, hmm. all right, well, we have 43 seconds. Do you have anything quick you want to say? No. Uh, yes. I would just, I would encourage people to come out to both the Montpelier and the Berry Pride events because uh, you guys all know, um, basing on their name, who runs the- Kel Arbor? Kel Arbor. Kel Arbor, um, recent would, interviewee. Uh, we really want to build up the attendance at both of these events yeah. so that we can continue to have them. And uh, there's a whole bunch of events going on. As you said, the Savoy has a, a great queer film festival with my co-hosts here going to oh, be no. moderating. So some really interesting films out there. Lots so of opportunities for poetry. So get out. Come have fun. to Pride and resist. resist.